John. Welcome back to Mr. G's workbench and the start of a new project. Uh, it's going to be a diorama. I know we had the Victory Kiss diorama going on. I'd rather not talk about that right now. Uh, that one's on hold while I try to muster up the inspiration to do ground cover and make it look a little more realistic uh, and get it weathered. I, I've got the cottage wet. Um, it's painted. It's not weathered yet and I still have to do the groundwork. Uh, then I can worry about the other stuff. So um, that'll come at some point, probably after I finish this one. Uh, this one's going to be an easier diorama to do because there's no buildings involved. And we're just going to be using uh, this kit, the European tram car from Mini Art. Comes with the uh, vacuum form street, comes with the accessories for the street, some uh, crew and some passengers. So we're going to do that. And on that street with that tr uh, tram car is going to be uh, a Jeep, a military police Jeep, with uh, an American GI talking up a girl waiting for the tram. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll be interesting for you guys. I hope you like it. I've got some decals for the MP, the insignia for his uniform. These are from Passion Models, uh, U.S. Army badge and insignia decal set. So we'll see how those work. And in the back of the Jeep, there's bound to be two or three cases of rations. I've got these, uh, these are like paper thin wood that you fold into uh, cardboard boxes. Uh, they're from Jay's work. So we're going to try that. We'll see how those look. And uh, today's episode is all about the base. So fortunately, there's no groundwork except for painting cobblestone and the rails. Uh, we're going to figure out how to do that together because I don't have a good idea. So we're gonna we're gonna frame this out with some balsa wood to make it look a little more presentable and uh, we'll get it painted up, we'll get the wood painted up and uh, we'll get everything set for the uh, the rest of the build. The, the tram car, the Jeep and the figures. So uh, before we get going, uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Uh, just hit the subscribe button down below, duh. And uh, with that, make sure you hit the bell. You'll be notified every time I put out a new video since I don't really have a regular schedule like some other people do. Uh, my random uh, video schedule will be better suited if you hit the bell. So uh, I hope you'll do that. Uh, let me know what you think of this project in the comments. And with that, let's jump into it. We've got the pieces, I'm using balsa wood, strip balsa wood, because it's easy to cut and it'll be easy to glue together. Uh, I've got it measured out. The key to doing this, uh, getting it right, is to make sure your first cut is square. So I use this, uh, this L, whatever it's properly called, excuse me. I made sure I had one edge cut uh, at 90 degrees. And then this way, when I, when I measure it out and mark it off, I go to the other end and do the same thing, mark it off, cut it at 90 degrees. Once I got that, then I cut the remaining parts to fit. And the way we're going to attach these to the uh, plastic base is with this Neato uh, two-part epoxy. Uh, I love this stuff because it's not like the stuff you get in Lowe's or Home Depot in your local uh, hardware store because you can actually measure out how much you're going to use. So you don't waste any, you know, with that plunger thing with the two part coming together, it never works right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a small batch. I'm going to try to do at least two sides. I've got all my clips ready to go. And uh, if I get two done, then I can go back, mix another small batch, get the other two done. And then we'll reinforce the inside with some carpenter's glue 
and we'll leave it dry, all right? So uh, let's see how this goes. So we've got the, uh, the frame is epoxied in. We're going to let that dry. Uh, I've got this uh, support piece I put in the middle. I squared it off. Uh, that I'm going to fasten with, uh, with uh, carpenter's glue. And then I'm also going to reinforce the corners with the carpenter's glue as well, which I conveniently have right here. And I'm going to apply it nice and thick. So that's the next day, the, uh, the epoxy is all dried and uh, our wood glue in the corners and holding our support is dry so we're good to go. Uh, looks good, I've sanded the edges. I got one edge where I, I kind of clipped it a little too close so if I can find some wood putty I'll fill that before I uh, stain it. Uh, the other thing I've done is you want to go in and uh, there's all these little dots from the vacuum forming process. Uh, I tend to just go in and, uh, and take my uh, flush clippers and try to trim off as many of those as possible. The only other thing we got to do before we paint this is I wanted to add uh, one detail to this. Mini Art gives you like a, uh, they give you a butt ton of, uh, stuff for the street. Uh, the trolley poles are on here. There's a park bench. There's a, a gutter, you know, uh, you know, a sewer drain. And then there's a sewer cover. So the one I want to put in is I want to put the sewer cover in and I figure I'll put it like right there. So what they give you is uh, they give you this little kind of section that it sits on and then you can put that in on top. So it's, it's flush. So what I've already done, you can see I've got a circle marked out there. You can kind of see it. Holy mackerel, there it is. So what I did is I, I took my circle template. I found the, uh, the diameter closest to the outer diameter of this because it's going to sit flush obviously. And I traced the circle on here. So next I'm going to cut that hole out and then we can put this in and uh, we'll reinforce it with some epoxy, alright? So let's try that. So the next step here is going to be, I have to glue that in, uh, the sewer opening with uh, some two-part epoxy. And I have to re-glue this in because, uh, as I came to realize, the wood glue wasn't going to hold the wood to the under underside of the uh, vacuum form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy them in as well. So, uh, I realized, like, rather than make my life difficult, I can uh, do one section of epoxy at a time. This way I can keep equal amounts coming out of both. So let's do the, we'll do the sewer first.
So I took this over to the paint booth. Uh, I primed it in gray primer. I was considering priming it in black. I opted out. Gray was fine. And then I came back and I used uh, a random gray to paint the whole thing. Uh, I want to say it was just a, a medium gray. And uh, we got that on. And before I start like going in and fine tuning it, I figured I'd come in. I'm going to paint the... Uh, the sewer cover and the uh, rails here because those are the only two things that are going to be something not gray or brownish so let's do that So that'll do it for the uh, the completion of the foundation for this diorama, the basic base, if you'll allow me. So it's the, uh, just to, to wrap it up again, it's the mini art uh, vacuum form base surrounded by some uh, strip balsa wood I got at the craft store, stained it. The, uh, the base itself is just painted gray. Uh, the, the rails and the sewer lid were painted steel. Then I went back over the rail heads with some aluminum to, to have them stand out a little. And it's actually nice and sublime like I hoped it would be. Uh, I think the contrasting uh, cobblestones stand out more on video than they do in real life. But uh, I'm very happy with this. And as much as it seems like a lot of space to fill up, the tram itself is going to take up almost the entire length of the rails. There'll be the two poles back here holding up the wire. And then up here, we're going to have the Jeep and a couple of MPs and the guy talking to the, to the girl. So uh, next episode, we're going to do the, uh, the tram car itself. The following episode will be the Jeep. And then we'll wrap up in the fourth episode with some figures. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, look, cut me some slack. I just needed a change of pace. Uh, planes and tanks constantly is is it gets to be like a bit of a grind like I'm supposed to enjoy this right we're all supposed to be having a good time so uh, in any event uh, thanks for tuning in if you go to the community uh, section of my channel on the community page I posted um, there's a uh, a poll uh, you can vote on what I'm gonna build next after I finish the this diorama uh, and then we'll segue into that as we also finish up the final episode of the uh, Ocean Hawk build review. So a lot on the plate, but we're getting there slowly but surely, baby steps. Uh, thank you all again very much. We're up over 1,020. I believe we're at 1022 uh, when I looked at it this morning. Thank you all very much. Again, uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, You've really helped to exceed my expectations, and uh, I really appreciate all the feedback I get. Uh, if you want to tell me this sucked, uh, leave me a comment below. If you liked it, leave me a comment below. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. I'm, I'm wide open to, to criticism and critique. So uh, until we get together again, uh, which will either be part two of this or part three of the Ocean Hawk build, but you know whatever I pencil in for the next episode, all right? 
Thanks again for stopping in. Stay well, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.